Hello, and welcome to For Further Review. Today I have with me three teachers from Black Fox Elementary School. I have Mr. John Simmons, and I have Ms. Sarah Todd, and I have Ms. Candy Powers. And we're going to be talking a little bit about instruction and why Black Fox is so special. What the audience may not know, but I certainly know, is the growth that we've seen in student learning at Black Fox in recent years. And so I've asked uh, these guests to come and talk a little bit about that. Candy Powers is our ESP site director. She also teaches at Black Fox. And then Sarah and John are sixth grade teachers. John, could you talk a little bit about the changes that you've seen at Black Fox and what impact those changes have had on student learning? Uh, the changes that we've seen there in the school have been just magnificent. If you, if you look, we came together as a team and decided that we had to do some things differently and that we really needed to apply ourselves and get a little neat, more deep into uh, our content and into our curriculum. And so we made a, a, a conscious effort to do that as a group. And it's just been amazing to watch the results that's happened, the sharing that's taken place between grade levels and between teachers and our committees that we meet with. And it's just been a wonderful professional environment for, for learning and for teachers also. It's been a great place. Sarah, a lot of times when we talk about committee work or we talk about meetings we have to go to, there's really a negative connotation about that. But what I'm hearing is that your meeting at Black Fox, really your meetings are pretty productive. Could you talk about some of those meetings, what they look like when you get together? Um, I think more than anything, every meeting now at Black Fox is about the children. That's what we're there for. We um, are constantly looking at how we can make Black Fox better for the children. And then that also, in turn, improves it for the teachers. Um, meetings seem to me to be more positive because we know that they're going to be productive and we know that we're going to come out of that meeting with something we can do in our classroom and that we can do with our children to make our days better and, and even sometimes easier. Um, we've discovered that a lot of people working together can help one person in their classroom and it just kind of passes all the way around the building and I think that that's helped a lot, a lot because we all feel like we're in it together and um, it just it makes the meetings are just more productive because we all have our focus just on the children. Good. Candy, speaking of children, you have responsibility in the classroom, but also you head up the ESP program, and it's really a phenomenal program. Could you talk a little bit about ESP, which is our after-school program, maybe how it contributes to the school day, but, but really what your goals are at Black Fox. What do, you, what do you want from the ESP program? What do you want to see the children doing there? Sure, absolutely. Um, we're very proud of our program at Black Fox, our ESP program. We have worked very hard to come up with uh, ways to integrate the school day and carry it over into ESP after school um, without the kids thinking that they're still in school for three more hours. Um, our teachers have been wonderful. We have two teachers per grade level that serve as ESP teacher mentors. So our young staff that come to work for us have two teachers in every grade level that they can go to for ideas and activities, um, even questions about a particular child that they may need help with. Um, we offer a variety of enrichments um, so that every child has will find something that they'll want to do after school. We offer homework help every day. We have three certified teachers that stay after school three to four days a week and help children. Um, we have teachers that stay after school and help our children that aren't getting paid, that are just there for free, just to help. Um, Could you talk a little bit about the connection between the school day and after school? You mentioned the teacher mentors, and, and yet you talked about that you want the after school program to look different than the during the day program. Could you talk just a little bit about the, how that difference happens and what about that transition for during, from during the day to after school? How does that work? Absolutely. When, when we dismiss children from the classroom, um, our ESP staff picks up the children and we take them first for a snack because they want to eat, of course. So we take them for a snack and then we immediately break off into grade levels. Um, and take the children back to classrooms and there we have homework help um, for about 30 minutes or a little longer uh, depending on what the need is that particular day. Um, we have teachers in the classroom along with our staff that help students um, but also just beyond homework help 
some of these students are pulled in small groups. Um, the te our staff talks with the teachers about what they need to work on. So we'll come up with, you know, more fun games and activities that they can do rather than just paper pencil things. Um, we have several websites that we uh, use utilize uh, for math and also for reading um, to help support their school day standards. Also, our staff um, tries very hard um, and they're getting better every day, every week at including some of the state standards in their lesson plans that they write for the afternoon. Um, and that's where the teachers that are mentors come in. They can go to those teachers and say, hey, you know, what are you working on in your classroom this week? What's something really fun that I can do with the kids um, to support what you're doing during the day? Great. Sarah, you uh, grew up here in Murfreesboro. You're, you're a Murfreesboro girl. Could you talk a little bit about why you chose to stay here in Murfreesboro and to teach in Murfreesboro? Oh, it was a very easy choice for me. It's um, When I went away to college, I knew this is where my heart was, and it helped a lot that my mom was at Hopgood and that I already had a love for Murfreesboro City Schools, and um, that's, that's really all I ever wanted. I wanted to give back to the community that gave me so much, and um, I'm so proud to be a part of Murfreesboro City. I'm, I'm proud of our students, and I'm, I'm so proud of our schools and, and our teachers and what we've been able to do, especially these past few years. It's truly an honor. One of the things that you've done at Black Fox is you really have rearranged your sixth grade schedule, and I don't know whether you want to talk about that or John, but I'd like for one of you all, or maybe both of you, to talk a little bit about what that schedule looks like, because you really are spending every minute that you possibly can with helping children learn. Probably the biggest thing that we've done is we've implemented, um, as of about a year and a half ago, we implemented two 30-minute intervention blocks for both reading and math. And we, what we discovered is that when the children were in their classes, that they were getting just enough, but they some of them needed extra. And so during those 30 minutes, we grouped them according to what they need. Not according to what they can do, but according to what they need help on. Because we know that none of them have perfectly mastered this, especially with all of the curriculum changes that have come down the pike. And so during those 30 minutes, they are with different teachers for different subjects. For example, Mr. Simmons teaches math. However, I teach a 30-minute math intervention each day. And so that child's getting 40 minutes, 45 minutes from Mr. Simmons, and they're getting 30 additional minutes from me. And then we have an additional 15 minutes in the morning where they're working on morning math. So instead of one long stretch, it's broken up. And we feel like that that better helps meet their needs. And it gives us a chance to help them instead of it just being a class teacher environment. It gives us more one-on-one -on -one time with the students. I think truly believe that the intervention is what changed our sixth grade and we have an amazing team with Kenesha Harper and Meredith Patrum and the four of us um, we just put our nose to the grindstone and we started working and we didn't really think it was possible when we first wrote the schedule out <laughs> Did we? No. <laughs> um, but but it, we found out it was not only possible, but that it was highly successful. John, you and I talked a little uh, a few months ago, and you said there was a day that you really remembered, and I can't remember the date. It was like I don't know whether it was December the ninth or maybe it was January. Yes. But could you talk a little bit about that day and and why that day sticks in your mind? Uh, we were just coming back from Christmas vacation, the year of two thousand and ten, uh, and. I had a lot of stuff that I wanted to discuss with Mr. Thompson, our principal, and I couldn't wait to tell him about a football game that I'd been to and some other things. And I'd actually been on television at the game, and I thought that's what he'd want to talk about. And that morning, he didn't want to talk about uh, football or anything else. We looked and we saw that our scores were just inept. We weren't doing what we needed to do. And so he, he challenged me that day face to face and said, you got to do something. You got to make something different. We've got to change something. And so I circled that day on my calendar. I still look back to it sometimes and realize, but it was really the time when we, we sat back and we looked at everything. We, we weren't, it's not that we weren't working hard. Right. We just weren't working as smart as we could work. And that's kind of what, as a team, we sat down and decided that we weren't all in favor of the interventions when they started, and it made for a super long day in the beginning. But now that we're used to them, you see the real benefit that comes from, and, and just like what Sarah said, we're able as a team now, if I cover an, uh, a new topic in mathematics for all four classes in the morning, and I see that 
that didn't go very well. I'm capable then to run and in intervention we can go back and, and look at it a different way. And maybe that gives us another opportunity to touch base with that. And it, it was a life-changing day, but it was also probably now that I look back at it, one of the greatest days of my life because it made me a better teacher and it made me a better person, I think. Well, thank you for sharing that. You're I, welcome. I, I remember that well. <laughs> um, Candy. Yes. What makes a good teacher? Give me some characteristics of a good teacher. Oh, wow. Patience is a virtue, <laughs> absolutely. Um, you have to be willing to work hard, um, just like every teacher in our school, I, I truly believe they do. Uh, we have a, a fantastic team of teachers at Black Fox, and, and um, especially in our hall, that's what I see all the time. So I'm, I'm right there with Sarah and uh, John in the fifth, sixth grade hallway. Um, but definitely patience and, and a, a strong work ethic, um, a willingness to just go above and beyond to, to make that phone call home after school, to give that child a little extra help, um, to, to just do more that, than is ex expected, I think, uh, makes a fantastic teacher. Sarah, what advice would you give someone who wants to be a teacher? Um, it is easily, a re it is the most rewarding thing you will ever do, and it's the hardest you will ever work. Um, last night, um, as in the midst of parent-teacher conferences and a full school day, I was really, really tired, but after meeting back-to-back -back with about eight parents, I realized how much I had already, already accomplished. And I told one of those parents, it's only October. <laughs> have your child until May. Look how far we've come and look how far we, could get, we can go. And I realized at that moment how, for how many years I've wanted to be a teacher my entire life. And I realized that, you know, if you truly love children, then you can make it happen. You have to have all the things that Candy just said. But if you truly love children and want the best for them, the one realization that I think we've made in our grade level is if children know that they're safe, secure, and loved, they can move mountains for you. And I think you have to first have that bond in relationship with a child, and then there's no limit as to where they can go or where you can take them. John, what's your vision for Murfreesboro City Schools? Wow. Uh, I just, like I tell my kids every day, I, I want to shock the world. I want to shock the world. And I tell them all the time, it, they can follow my lead and we can get there, but it's really them. When they take the initiative, when they want it as bad as I want it, I tell them all the time, we tell this story about being successful and about a man who's gasping for air. And I say, when you want to be as successful as you want to breathe, and when you put everything into it, it was that. I think as a school system, I watch it and just in the sharing that we do with our PLC groups across. When we got together as a sixth grade team this year, it's still one of the most amazing days I've ever spent bouncing some of those ideas. I think the, the future for Murfreesboro City Schools is limitless with the people that we have here and, and the way that we have our system set up now. There, there's an opportunity for us to do as much as we want to do. We can change the world starting right here in Murfreesboro. I truly believe that. I really do. I have the highest uh, appreciation for you, uh, just just real respect. And uh, thank you so much for sharing this time with me and for letting me work with you. It's a real privilege and a real honor. And every day I'm thankful that, that I get the opportunity to work with folks like you. Thank you very much for your support of Murfreesboro City Schools, and uh, we thank you for the love that you have for your children.